Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the HyperX Quadcast 2 and the Quadcast 2S sound superior, eliminating background noise, reducing unwanted sounds like the sounds of gaming PCs in the background, for example, making yourself sound clearer, and also setting it up in the best possible way. The obvious one of these is getting it on a boom arm, as I'll show you in a little while. I'm also going to show you how to use software, how to set it up in Windows, how to use HyperX Ingenuity software to improve the sound and adjust the RGB lighting. And also I'm going to talk about how to use SteelSeries Sonar, which is a free piece of software which works with all microphones, but can be used here to use AI noise cancellation to eliminate more background noise and even apply EQ profiles, which will enhance the quality of your microphone. I'm gonna leave timestamps down below so that you can jump to the relevant points in the video and all the little tips I'm gonna give you and skip things you're not gonna use. So for example, if you can't afford a boom arm right now, then you can skip that part for now and come back to it later. And I'll show you the other things that are important and you might find handy. And obviously I'm gonna to link to all the relevant bits of software in the description down below as well, so you can access those nice and easily. I'd highly recommend getting the microphone on a boom arm, and I recommend this for a lot of microphones. The Quadcast 2 and 2S is no different. Essentially, what you're trying to do is to get the mic on a boom arm so it's close to your face, which means you can reduce the gain, but also you're getting it away from your keyboard and from your mouse so it's not picking up those noises, and also it's not picking up knocks on the desk and bumps on the desk and taps and other things that will otherwise transfer into the microphone, even through the shock mount. You don't want those noises. You want to make it as clean as possible. Once you get it onto the boom arm, you can reduce the gain. I'll talk about that in a second. But it's really easy to do this. The microphone obviously comes pre-attached as this shock mount, and that's fantastic because that will help eliminate any knocks into it pretty well. But if you take it off the base, as you can see here, you basically just have to twist it off. And once that's twisted off, you'll then find a threading under there, which is designed to work with most boom arms. So there's actually two threads in there of different sizes that should work with the majority of boom arms that you can buy out there and will easily work with the PSA One Plus that I'm showing you here. Now, you can adjust the bracket on the rear of this by just loosening it and then straightening that out. I'd recommend doing this. It just makes the process easier and then you can tighten that up again. Now, it's worth noting that you can take the microphone straight out of the shock mount as well, which makes it easier to do this process. So in order to do that, you have to twist the mic slightly to release the latch inside because there's a little notch in there that's holding it in place. And then you can slide the microphone out. As usual, I made that look more complicated than it is, but it's pretty easy to just unlock that and pull it out. And then what you want to do is to put the shock mount onto the boom arm and then just tighten that up. So just spin it around until that's nice and tight on your boom arm and adjust that into position. And then we're going to stick the mic back in place. Now, what you'll notice here with this boom arm, at least, is the mic is facing the wrong way. To get the best sound out of it, you want to be talking into the side that has the HyperX logo on it. Now, the good news is that you can just loosen the straps on the shock mount. So take each of those off individually from both the top and bottom of the positions they're mounted in around there. And then you can just turn the mic around in the housing and then reattach it using those same mounting points that you just removed it from. This is important to do to make sure it's facing you essentially when you're talking into it. So just reposition that in a logical way where it'll fit with your build. So the way my mic is positioned, for example, it will now end up looking like this and I'll be talking straight into it. Now I'd highly recommend plugging in a pair of 3.5 millimeter wired headphones if you can. Plug that into the 3.5 millimeter port on the HyperX Quadcast and then you'll be able to use that to mic monitor. Now with the button on the front, you can switch between various different modes. So there are three modes. One is the volume of the headphones, one is the mic monitoring volume, and then the other one is the mic gain level. Press and hold that button. You can also switch between the different polar patterns. So you'll see this represented by the LED light on top. What you're looking for is basically to put it into the mode where the light is exclusively on the front and that's towards the HyperX logo and that's the cardioid pickup pattern which you can see here this is the one where we're going to talk into the front if you have it on any of the other settings then you might find that it picks up more environmental noise so this one for example picks up sound from all around this one picks up sound from the left and right sides and then the other one picks it up from front and behind this is useful for podcasting and other things but if you're talking just the microphone it's just for you 
then you want it in cardioid mode, which looks like this. The next step is to download HyperX's Ingenuity software, which you can download from the HyperX website. Now, this is available in two different formats, standard Ingenuity and the beta version. As of the time of making this video, you want the original version of it because the beta version won't actually work with the Quadcast 2 or the Quadcast 2S. That might change in future. But in here, what you can see is we can go into the microphone and then you can find out other things about it and tweak other settings on it. So it's worth having this because it allows you to adjust the RGB lighting. But also importantly, you'll see more information on the cardioid patterns, as you can see down here. So we can flick between those and it'll tell you what they're meant for and how they work and what the indicator looks like. And as you're switching between those in the software, you'll also see that change on the microphone. So as well as using the hardware button to do it, you can do it from the Ingenuity software. So you can set it in the right mode and make sure that's set up properly. You can also adjust the mic volume on here. And this is the gain level on the microphone. So how much noise the microphone's picking up. I'd recommend actually setting it somewhere around 50%. Now it's worth playing around with and working out what's best for you, but you don't want it on maximum gain. You don't want to set it to its maximum level. In the settings, you'll find that you can actually see the microphone listed in here as well as connected hardware. So in the settings section in Ingenuity, you can potentially go into that and then you can access the firmware update for it. So you'll see if we go down here, you'll see there is a support page and you can potentially get firmware. But at the time of making this video, it's not currently working properly. That might well change by the time you're doing it, of course, or if you're using the beta version of the software in the future. In Windows, you want to make sure the mic's set up properly. So right click on the little speaker icon, then click on sound settings. And in the system sound settings, you want to set your speakers as the Quadcast 2 if you're using it with a 3.5 millimeter jack. More importantly, you want to set the microphone as your main input device. Again, make sure the volume for this is somewhere around 50, 60%, something like that. You don't want it at 100%. The higher you have it, the more it'll pick up the surrounding noise. So you just reduce that as much as you can by getting it on the boom arm, getting it close to you, and then test and see what's working for you in your environment. And I'll show you how to do that in a second and how to check which is the best level. But somewhere around 60%, 70%, something like that should be pretty good. From the more sound settings, you will also go in and set this as your default communication device. And you can make sure it's set in both speakers and recording and set it up there. And then you can right click on it and go into properties and then advance and make sure it's set to the highest quality in there as well. So click on that and set that and apply and apply that to the microphone. Then the next thing to do is to see how much noise it's picking up and use OBS to do that. So one of the tips I'll give you is regarding OBS. Now this isn't essential, but it is pretty handy and a good thing to do. If you're going to use OBS for streaming or whatever, then you might be familiar with this already. If you're not, then this is just a handy tool because as you can see, you can see the mic on the meter down here. So in order to set this up, first of all, download and install it, and then go through the basic setup process. So if you go into settings and then into audio, from the drop down, you want to select your microphone as the HyperX Quadcast 2 or the 2S. And then obviously your desktop audio would be default or whatever you're wanting to listen through. So it might be the speakers on the Quadcast 2S, for example. So we can set that and then click apply. Now in here, essentially, you can see the gauge of when I'm talking and how much it's picking up. You don't want it to go into the red zone. And ideally, what you want is for it not to be showing anything when you're not talking. Now, I say set the mic to somewhere around 50%. You can see on the indicator how much gain that is, what it would look like on the front of it, for example. The goal here is to basically have it so it doesn't make any sound when you're not talking, and that way eliminating a lot of the background noise. So if we stop talking for a minute, you'll see hopefully that this mic meter doesn't move. So you can see what's happening there. Now, if you have the gain higher than that, so if you crank it all the way up, as I will do now, if I turn it all the way up, you'll see suddenly a lot more appearing in there. You'll see when the mic's cranked up really high like that with a lot of gain that it picks up a lot of background noise. And if you have it on one of the other polar patterns, like the stereo one or the bi-directional ones, it'll also pick up sound from the surrounding environment, both behind and around the microphone rather than just in front of it. 
So getting the mic gain down can make a big difference. If you're finding that your audio is still not great after you've tried out these various different tips that I've shown you, then here's another one. This is Steel Series Sonar, which is available as part of Steel Series GG, which is a free bit of software that you can download. You don't actually need a Steel Series product for. So I've got a separate guide that goes into depth on this that I'll link to in the description that will give you access to other things. But at a basic level, I want to show you how it's useful for the quadcast too. So in the master section in here, you can set your personal mix, which is what you'll hear when you're in streamer mode. So I'm going to set it so that personal mix is what I'm hearing through the HyperX headphones. The stream mix then is still series sonar stream, but the most important part here is we want to select the HyperX Quadcast 2 as the microphone. With this set as the microphone, you can go into the mic settings. And from here, you can see that you can apply a number of different things. We have AI noise cancellation. This can be adjusted so you can increase the amount or decrease the amount of noise cancellation. You can also set a compressor, which basically changes your levels to stop you from being really loud or really quiet. You have a noise gate so that you can automatically eject noise from there. I often find that just the clearcast noise cancellation actually is beneficial in that it eliminates a lot of the background noise for you. You'll notice you also have an equalizer in here as well so that you can go into various different things and you'll see that there are options to change the audio as well. So we can apply EQ profiles to this now. So we could have a broadcast quality microphone for example you could have a, a flat one. You can apply it so you have a deep voice and settings on that. You can make it so you're less nasal if that's an issue. You can have it set to balanced and various other things in here. Now, this tool is very handy for improving the quality of your microphone, especially with that AI noise cancellation and with the EQ profiles. Obviously, you can make these changes significantly. It can be used in other ways, a lot of other things. So in example, you can see in here, we have game, chat, media, and microphone separated out. And this can basically be used for various different virtual audio channels that you can then put into OBS and you can separate them out for streaming purposes. I've gone into a lot more depth on that on the separate guide that I'll link to in the description. But here I just wanted to show how powerful this can be at transforming your voice but also really helping just to eliminate that background noise. So if you do find that you're still getting a lot of background noise in here, I'd recommend playing around with these settings. For example, turn the clear cast noise cancellation off, maybe just put noise reduction on to try and remove some of the background noise and set these settings and try and tweak those a little bit, change the noise gates, maybe automatic settings in here. There's a lot of intelligence to it. You should find it makes quite a bit of difference to your audio and you'll find that that's been improved nicely. Unfortunately, you can't hear that on the fly, so you can't mic monitor it, but you can definitely notice a difference, maybe record some clips with yourself and see what it sounds like and work out if it sounds better this way. One final thing worth mentioning is that in the Ingenuity software, you can customize the lighting of the microphones. There are various different options in here that you can go through. Now, obviously, there's more available with the Quadcast 2S, which unfortunately I can't show you. But with the Quadcast 2, you can start to do various different things in here with lighting either being static or going through various different cycles. And you can also apply a setting so that it reacts to your voice or to the environmental noise. As standard defaults, so this setting with this nice satisfying blue glow to it. If you use the tap to mute function on top, the lighting will turn off and that's one indicator that it's muted. The other one is if you move the volume wheel all the way down, you'll see that the little mic indicator on it turns red. Pay attention to this gauge because it's very handy to know how much gain you've got on it, as I mentioned earlier on. Hopefully this video has been useful on helping you to get the Quadcast 2 or the Quadcast 2 S improved in terms of the audio quality. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks very much for watching. And don't forget to check out the link to the Steel Series Sonar Guide, which you'll also find really helpful too. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.